Okay, now I'm stretching. <laughs> just, just tonight I, I can't. Brain's not working. Uh, <laughs> I tried doing a search for something to talk about, and then I realized that's Bonnie Raitt song. Is that who that is? Hang on. I don't care who it is. I don't really like that song. But <laughs> I was just like, okay, something to talk about. I'll Google it. <laughs> That's obviously what came up. And the next thing, when I started typing the space to come up with something to talk about in a conversation. <laughs> How vague is that? <laughs> Jenga. Clicky pencils. Eyeglasses. Oh, I have to remember to start wearing these. <laughs> it's so much easier to uh, to read when I'm doing this. Well, let's see. Let's click on the wiki how. The first one we we find here. Starting a conversation to get to know someone or breaking an awkward silence can be very stressful. To start a conversation when you have nothing to talk about, use guidelines. <laughs> Hi, nice to meet you. <laughs> Remark on the location, location or occasion. <laughs> it is Tuesday. Ask an open-ended question. Do you like to read words? Oh, am I intruding? Do you come here often, really? Oh, I see. Yeah, nice clothes, question. I think that's right. Uh huh. This is not what I'm looking for. <laughs> it, oh, technology. That's what I want to talk about. Technology's crazy. Um, if you didn't watch the other video, this is uh, Lemon Pepino. <laughs> which is the lime cucumber Gatorade. It's disgusting. Don't tell me it's not disgusting. It's so gross. But there we go again. Uh, technology has, in my lifetime, jumped leaps and bounds. Like, when I was young, technology was like, well, records and eight tracks were big. Uh, if you don't know what those are, look it up. <laughs> I still have a Star Wars 8-track. Um, yeah, I'm that cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, so like calculators maybe? Uh, even then, like, they were still relatively new. I don't think like they'd been pocket-sized calculators you could carry around for a long time. Um, Everything else you probably had to plug in or something like that. I don't remember. You know, they still make plug-in ones now. But uh, so yeah, that was. I mean, we had. I think we had a color TV. I'm like a hundred percent sure we did because my dad was on top of that shit. But uh, we did have black and white TVs. I remember having a few black and white TVs, and um, you had UHF or VHF. Those were the two, like, kind of like AM, FM. And you had to have a pretty good antenna positioned the right way to get certain shows. And um, on the shows, I liked the shows in the late 70s, early 80s. They were just so good. <laughs> I don't know. They were probably terrible, too, but I don't know. So yeah, that's uh, that was the technology. Um, there, I don't think they were home computers. No, I mean, not like we have today, at least. I mean, like, I don't think that came around until the the apples, the ones they used in schools, the green and black screens. Um, I remember using those in school when they first came out, and playing the uh, Oregon Trail. It's a good game. <laughs> Have they remade that game? I'm sure they've rebooted it. They've rebooted everything. Uh, yeah, I remember that was computers. I still had rotary dial phones for years beyond uh, beyond that. So, uh, 
I remember VCRs when they first came out. I remember cable when it first started getting big in my lifetime, at least. Uh, I'm trying to think. Of, yeah, VCRs. I remember. Well, before that, there was these huge laser box disc things. I remember my cousin Larry had them down in Rhode Island. I don't know what they're called. I don't think they were laser discs though, because it wasn't a silver shiny disc. It was a box like thing that you put into this machine. It was weird, stupid. It was like the size of a record, <coughs> but thicker and heavier. <laughs> that sucks. Uh, yeah. So there was the Betamax and the VHS when they when when VCRs first came out. Um, it was kind of like Blu-ray and HD in, in, in a way. Now, Beta was actually, I think, the better quality, but VHS won out, and I can't remember the reason behind that, but it was an obvious reason. Um, I do remember that, and I remember being able to record stuff for the first time. Um, so you could like watch shows again. And that was like crazy to me. And then the video stars stores started popping up, and it was awesome because there was one down the tracks at the old bus terminal near where I lived, so I could walk there with me and my mom because she didn't uh, she didn't have a drive a car she didn't have a drive she didn't have a car and and couldn't drive because she's legally blind. And so we don't want her to have a license. <laughs> I think she probably could have driven. She was just scared chicken um yeah yeah so going to rent the very first vhs i ever rented was well that my mother rented was bill cosby himself and that hooked me on bill cosby immediately i remember being a kid and just thinking that was the funniest thing i'd ever heard almost made me want to like be a comedian like <laughs> i'm like oh my god that's hilarious i mean now it's like it's still funny. I've gone back and watched it, and it's not as good as I remember it, obviously. <laughs> but it's still good. It, it still stands the test of time. He's a nice guy, I think. I'd like to meet him. I, I have a feeling I'm going to wake up one of these mornings and Bill Cosby will be dead. And that'll be a terrible day. I've, I've said this for years, actually. Even when I lived back in Massachusetts, I remember saying that very thing, saying... One morning I'm going to wake up and Bill Cosby will be dead. And the world will be that much worse off. It's sad when the good guys, the heroes die, isn't it? I think about Jim Henson, Bob Ross. Um, Walt Disney, I was too young to remember that. But... Um, it just sucks <laughs> when the good guys lose somebody. I think about a lot of actors now, or like when I do read, like Philip Seymour uh, Hoffman. Yeah, Hoffman. Philip Seymour Hoffman. You know what? Jeez. Jeez, Louise. For goodness sake, this is getting bad. I know it's right, but for someone. Yeah, Seymour Hoffman. Okay. Why didn't I think that was right? I'm always second guessing myself. I gotta stop doing that. Uh, the universe has yet to drop tickets for me to go to the West Coast and apply for jobs yet. It just hasn't happened. Oh, yeah, or also the money for, like, rent. <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes I just. Keep waiting on the miracle. Keep waiting on the miracle. <laughs> God, I hate country music. I, I just, I mean, I know it, it's not all that. Like, I've heard a lot of country music living around here. There's very, very little that I like. Very little. Unimpressed. It almost seems like they weakened up over the years to be more mainstream or something. Not that I, but like when I think of Kenny Rogers or, um, Willie Nelson, obviously. Like I like, I like them. I mean, even Kenny Rogers is a lot. Of, I mean, just dropped by to see what condition my condition is in. That's a good song. I never realized that was him until recently too. I was listening to the Big Lebowski soundtrack, and um, 
that came on, I'm like, ooh, I'd love to cover this song. This is a pretty cool song. It should be fun on the guitar to play because there's not a lot of guitar stuff going on. Um, but the noises are fun. And uh, I brought it down. Practice. This was a while ago because Chris uh, Cohen was still in the band at the time. And he said, oh, yeah, it's Kenny Ro the Kenny Rogers song, Eight Miles High. I'm like, I don't think that. Is that Kenny Rogers? He's like, yeah, that's Kenny Rogers. I'm like, oh, well, I'll be damned. Probably. But I refuse to wait in line. I'm going to work my way right up to the front. Bruce Lee's son. Remember that night? Oh, those many weeks ago when this show was young, we were all just growing kids together, weren't we? <laughs> Brandon Lee. <laughs> I like going back in these. See, I don't. I I meant it's in one of these videos. All right, I tell you what. Now that I know how to do this, uh, I need to write this down. <laughs> Not gonna remember. I meant to put a link to, there's a Blair's Carriage site up that somebody hosts, and they have all the music on there, or, or most of it on there. Um, so let's just say at... Yeah, hold on a second. 11.30 Blair's. And this is episode... 21. That's three official weeks, even though I don't do them every day. I usually skip Saturday and Sundays, if you haven't noticed. No, I think I did a day one this Sunday. Uh, I guess this is part two. Much better than part one. Sometimes I should just burn the first one, just let it go. But I feel like I put a lot of work into it, and there's still enough interesting things that I've spoken of here. And like, I, I want to remind everybody too, like, and I know I'm grinding this into the ground. This is, I started this Road to 40 just to record myself once a day for 20 minutes to an hour. Like, it was never meant to be really like a, uh, like a show, I guess. I don't know. Now I feel like it's kind of becoming that, but I don't, I don't mind. Like, I'm having fun. I think it's fun. So, it's like I'm presenting my, my life over the course of this year in a series of webisodes or whatever. I don't know. I mean, there's no acting. It's just, like, I feel like it's like a show thing, like a talk show thing. Yeah. But I don't have an audience. Do I need a laugh track? Would that be stupid? That'd be dumb if I did that. Anyway, yeah, it's 7 minutes and 40 seconds in some video. <laughs> I meant to put a link to that website. I don't like the fact that I can't link in the, the frame, like, so you can click on it to an external website. If there's a way to do it and I'm not doing it right, let me know. Hey, did anybody go out there and order a peanut butter and jelly hold of bread? Because if you did, I really want to hear the story. I want to see the reaction. Record it. Make a channel. Do this. Let's all do this. You know what? I bet you if everybody did this and we started listening, oh, my friend over here, my friend over here, my friend over here, you'd start to realize that people are friendly <laughs> and all kind of get along on, on most levels. And the exceptions are the people that want to start a fight like I don't want to start a fight I may have an opinion on something but doesn't mean I want to start a fight I'm a fuck I'm perfectly okay with somebody not agreeing with what I believe in you know that's their right <laughs> as wrong as they are <laughs> gender bending and Jesus take the wheel <laughs> it's been some good stuff Remember when I talked about uh, doing an entire informer? Informer. Detective man said, Daddy Snow stabbed somebody down the lane. I lick your boom boom down. <laughs> I never got around to that. Ooh, what motivates you? I had written, this This was a, an interesting list. I just had ideas one day. I was just like, oh, write that one. Write that one. Nine. Nine of them. The first one is credit. <laughs> and I decided I'm not going to... You know, I, I do want to talk about that at some point. Because it's a trap for the lower class. Because <laughs> there's no medium, middle class anymore. Let's face it. It's a trap. 
I'm not playing the game anymore. <laughs> what motivates you? That was another one. Uh, affirmative action. That's a fun one to tackle. I know that's not really a big issue these days, but it's something that I have thoughts on. And I'd like to share them. And like I said, this whole road to 40 is also 40 years from now, too. I'm hoping that like my kids take the time to come back and watch these, because how cool would that be? I don't know, to be able to watch my mother or father, well, you know, the, well, any time in their past. You know, it's never too late to start something like this. For a long time, I put something like this off because I, I just didn't, I don't know. I don't know. I wanted to do this for a long time. Like, I didn't have any intention of originally of putting it on YouTube. I was just going to do um, just videos with the kids talking directly to them. But I think I'll do those, too. But this, I think, is even more interesting because, yeah, sure, I can say, hey, Gwen, hey, Gracie, hey, Griffin. And, like, it could be personal. But obviously, I'm not going to put that on here. But, like, I think them being able to see, like, almost like a history book or, or just an open mind, like, what was in my head, you know? I'd like to know that, like, what was in my parents' heads. Like, I mean, it doesn't, I don't dwell on it, but... We've come a long way as a people, but we still got a long way to go. I'm sure I'm not the first person to say that. We just, uh, we make a lot of mistakes as a, a race of beings. <laughs> I think we're just a spreading disease on this planet, because at the rate we're multiplying, we're going to require more food and so on and so forth. I just, I just, I don't know. I hope there's a way out of it. I hope we can figure something out and save our city the doors what do you think about the doors most musicians i know don't like the doors no it's not that they don't like them but they it's not like it's they stand out to them and i've always felt like i really like the doors maybe it was just jim morrison i mean with the music and the keyboard dee -dee 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 -dee, all that little stuff like you don't hear that prominently in songs and i and i think for them it worked and i don't think it works in every case but I like them, so if, if I had to vote, I'd say, yeah, good times. <laughs> Whenever I think of the doors, I think of the goo man. Paul Audette. Where are you these days, you devil? You lovely devil. <laughs> you sweet, innocent man. Oh, that guy, was, he, he could be a jerk. But whatever. Gary was terrible to him. Our friend, well, my roommate just treated him terribly. Oh, just awful. Did he eat the seats? We went over that. My fat face. Let's make the world a happier place together. That's the first time I said that. I remember that. Way back when. Value of talent. Oh, this is like a recap show. If you haven't seen, then check out this scene from episode 2, part A, department C, page 11. <laughs> I know these videos get a little... The other night when I did the Tales from the Chill Room Part 2, I didn't know how to do it because I usually use Part 2 to describe if I'm doing a second video. So then I was like, oh, how do I do this? Do I call it like Volume 2? Because it's almost like a chapter with, it's within a chapter. What does that call? What's a chapter within a chapter? Not Philip Seymour Hoffman, I can tell you that. Ugh. Kurt Cobain, you know. Although, who knows where Nirvana would have turned out. I would like to have seen, but... Uh, I forget what I was going with that. Son of a gun. Well, I'm at 19 minutes anyway. This has gone on longer than I intended. So, uh, I'm going to ramble some more. Uh, you know, this is, this is some fun stories, I guess. You know, if you like my stories, then I'm, I'm glad, because I like telling stories, even if they're not perfect. <laughs> I'm getting there. I'll get there. I'll never be good old Jim Henson or Corey Smith, but yeah, I'd put them on the same level. They could both tell a pretty good story. <laughs> Although Corey's stories were usually true stories <laughs> rather than fictional, but nonetheless, in their, in their own uh, genres, they are both amazing storytellers. And with that, I bid you adieu.
I will see you in the next video.